Welcome back, horror family. Spiders. The word alone carries a frightening impression, creating instant imagery with the potential to curdle the blood, elevate the heart, and tighten the skin in a swift panic of fear. Arachnophobia is defined as the irrational fear of spiders or other arachnids. Though the 6% of the population relating to this phobia would say there is absolutely nothing irrational about it. The sight of spiders could justify the terror. The 1990 movie of the same name features a monstrous spider, affectionately referred during filming as Big Bob. The actual spider used was a goliath bird eater, but the mortally venomous creature depicted in the movie is unlike anything ever seen. Beginning with a trek into the far forgotten regions of the Amazon, we find a team headed by entomologist Dr. James Atherton advance unknowingly into the den of an undiscovered monster. They rile a very large, extremely aggressive creature that hitches a ride back to their base camp, then claims the photographer as his first victim, slyly stowing itself in the coffin of said casualty, following a path out of the land that time neglected into the bosom of modern day society to feast and breed until its hollow appetite is content. What did Dr. Atherton and his team of explorers discover at the bottom of the 2000 foot depression in the Amazon? Did they find a species secluded for millions of years or something with primeval bearings in the region, ancient with origins of evil? Big Bob, or the General as referred to in the film, had many characteristics that were not atypical for spiders. First, he was said to be eusocial, meaning it had an advanced level of social organization. A single cast, typically female, but in this case male, produces non-reproductive offspring. This is common in ants and bees, but never been seen in any type of air-breathing arthropods. Spiders generally have a complex courtship, depending on the specific type. Females lay up to 3,000 eggs, with each baby capable of reproducing. Big Bob mated with the common house spider in the Jennings barn, creating an army of drone-like children, carrying a lethal toxin behind a very powerful and painful bite, then generated his own queen to produce a pure lineage. The venom of Big Bob and his spawn was incredibly fatal. Victims suffered a horrible death within minutes from being bit. Comparatively, out of the tens of thousands of species in the world, very few are poisonous, with only 15 deaths caused by spider bites reported in the past 50 years. The General's first victim, Jerry Manley, appears to have died, according to the others in the team, from exotic fever. Bitten on his hand, he instantly showed to have distressed breathing, the venom possibly paralyzing his lungs, then attacking the nervous system, putting him into convulsions, leading Dr. Atherton and his assistant to believe he fell to his sickness, with no other possible explanation at hand. When Jerry's body is shipped back to his family in California, Big Bob hitches a ride in the coffin, completely extracting all of the fluids out of Manley's corpse. This behavior is completely unusual, and even the world's largest spiders typically don't attempt to eat prey bigger than a bird or a large rodent. So, was Big Bob an anomaly species that, due to isolated geography, evolved in aggressive nature with a higher than normal toxicity level? Or as I said before, was there something else behind the malevolent nature that could describe his exceptional traits unlike any other arachnid? One explanation could be he was a Nephila jurassica, a type of orb weaver spider known for their impressive webs, said to have lived millions of years ago. Fossils found showed they grew to the size of a human hand and located in the tropical regions of prehistoric China. Or the general could have been a highly evolved funnel web spider. The Sydney funnel web is considered to be the most deadliest on earth. Its toxin is a compound that only affects primates, targeting their nervous system. The males usually hold higher potent of venom than females, and effects take within an hour. With no natural predators in a secluded region such as an undiscovered area of the Amazon, a species of funnel web could develop to be the monster that we saw in the film. Or maybe Big Bob was something more sinister, explaining why his actions were less like an animal trying to survive and more a beast with a carnal appetite that could not be satiated. For some in Venezuela, the word Canaima conjures the image of death. Native tribes such as the Pomones, Patamona, and Carib told legends of an evil spirit that lurks in the dense forest, responsible for the natural order of death, a symbol for the finality of life. 
Possibly when the team went into the deep forest, they trespassed on the spirit of Kanaima in conduit form of a vicious spider. The interlopers brought out the presence from the dark regions, which gives good explanation to why the native guides refused to go into that area to begin with. Kanaima is also the name of the town that Jennings moved to, where Big Bob and his progeny wreaked havoc. If you keep this in mind next time you watch the movie, there are subtle references made that could insinuate that Frank Marshall or the writers were aware of this. For instance, when Ross was going to warn the Kendalls about the spiders, Chris finds the door to the house unlocked. Ross says to him, Kanaima welcomes you. This is meant to be a commentary by Ross on the trusting nature of small towns. But if you consider that both Irv and Blair were dead by the time they get there, it could also be a subtext that the spawn of Kanaima is awaiting inside. Either he was a lost species, a new and undiscovered arachnid, or primordial legend. The general, aka Big Bob, was monstrous in nature, and something that I am happy does not exist. Spiders fascinate and frighten us, a creature enigmatic in nature, concealing its thoughts in darkness. Big Bob is possibly one of the most forbiding variants with an ominous presence, and hopefully in due time we will see him again in a darker depiction. What are your thoughts on Big Bob and his hellish children? Would you like to see him again in either a sequel or reimagining? Let me know what you think in the comments section below, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Stay scared.